Now, bank holiday weekends are often blighted by dismal weather and travel chaos, but almost half of us still hit the road this time last week, determined to make the most of the last long weekend of the summer. It's going to be midwinter by the time we get another break, and some people are saying that's too long to wait. So breakfast Keith Doyle has been taking the temperature on the streets. Can you believe it's Saturday already? That week flew by because of the bank holiday, but I don't mean to depress you, but there's no more bank holidays between now and Christmas. In England and Wales, we have the fewest bank holidays of any country in Europe, just eight. In Scotland and Northern Ireland, they have two more. In France, they have 11. In Italy, 12. And in parts of Spain, they have as many as 14. So do you think that there should be an extra bank holiday between now and Christmas? Well, it is a little bit harsh. Um... It's a long haul, and I think autumn's the time when, you know, the cold nights are drawing in. That's when you really need to have uh, the occasional day to stretch your weekend. It's not fair. They should spread them out more over the year. They should. We need some days off, I think. Especially especially when it's cold. Yes. You need a few cozy a Monday, days A in. nice Monday in bed would be... Uh, It'd be lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if there were more, then I wouldn't really benefit from them because I usually work over the bank holidays anyway, so it makes no difference to me. I don't think it's a bit of a mistake because personally I'd like a few more good weekends between now and Christmas. I mean, I've got bills to pay, you know? A few years ago, there was talk of having Trafalgar Day where we'd celebrate the Battle of Trafalgar, but those plans were quietly shelved. There was fears we might upset the French. Now there's talk of Communities Day where we all volunteer for something. But what do you think is the best excuse for a new bank holiday? Services Day, I suppose, especially with uh, the heroes, sort of the concert for the heroes, you could have a day combined with that. You know, we've got Diwali, we've got um, Hanukkah and so forth. I think we should have a Women's Day, you know, so we can go and do the chores and the cleaning and sort our lives out, because it's difficult at the weekends when you're hungover or whatever. I think Street Performers Day would be an absolutely fantastic idea. I mean, people like myself, you know, with many years of long service, deserve that bit of recognition. We just don't get... Volunteers Day would be perfect. People could go out into the community, help people perhaps less fortunate than themselves, or, I don't know, go and help paint a school, or... <laughs> and would you do it, or would you stay in bed? Uh, no, I definitely would go and help. <laughs> Nelson Mandela Day might be quite good, but I think, seriously, put in uh, Quincy ME Day. You know, medical detective, he's like, quite good, quite good. So I think that would be one, one for bank holiday. So what would you do then, just stay in bed and watch yeah, Quincy? And... Just stay in bed and watch Quincy all day. I think. Because Christmas Day falls on a weekend this year, the next bank holiday isn't till December the 27th, which I've worked out is 114 days away. Goodness me. Well, that was a Keith Doyle reporting. Uh, one of the suggestions you heard there was a so-called Community Day. Mike Locke is from the organisation Volunteering England. Morning to you. We'll come to you more seriously in a minute. But I mean, you, you've got it. That your problem there is that lady, for example, just wants to stay in bed and watch telly all day. They don't want to go volunteer on a bank holiday, do they? It would be a great idea, you know, <laughs> to have a bank holiday, you know, because it'd be, actually, and this would be really good timing. I think that's what we're thinking, because it's quite a long haul up to Christmas. So you, when would you want it? Well, the, late October, we think, would be a good time, because that breaks up this long autumn nicely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you'd have a day when you could get together, maybe to say thank you to your volunteers, or maybe you'd be thinking, well, we could do something, something in our local neighbourhood just to kind of, you know, make some environmental improvements or mm -hmm. to run something for the kids or something like that. So it'd be a party, basically, and a celebration in a way of saying thank you to the volunteers. But, of course, if somebody wants to stay in bed, you know, you can't force them to volunteer. Well, no, I was thinking, Mike, what you were saying there, it sounds very, um, it so sounds very worth, worthy and worthwhile, the idea, you know, community day, yeah. people getting together mm -hmm. and uh, thank you to volunteers or maybe volunteering on that day. Yeah. In reality, I mean, is that realistic? Is that the way people would use it, do you think? How can you encourage that? Well, I think people do. I mean, when there's been a year of volunteering, you know, before and those kind of celebrations, people really switch into it. And, you know, there's not many people in, in, among all of us in the population who won't volunteer if they're asked. You know, it's only a very small percentage. Most people do volunteer at some time. And so, you know, if, if there's that kind of little nudge of a day, you know, saying this is a day when you can get together, talk about things, maybe talk about how you can do things to help kids, older people, sports, you know, environmental improvements, whatever it is. And, and you know, there's also it's great to say thank you to the people who've done it, you know. And maybe I was wondering, you know, it's just, what, what could you do? It's up to people to invent the sort of thing that they'd like to do to, to um, 
to celebrate it all, really, mm. isn't it? Yeah. How far are you getting with this? I mean, you know, is anybody in government going to take this seriously, do you think? Well, we've been talking about it with our, our friends in, in other volunteering organisations and with the TUC for, for a while. Yeah. We're pleased to see that the government is proposing what they call a big society day. So that, I mean, we think we're on the same track. But, uh, you know, and also as we build up towards the Olympic, Paralympic Games in 2012 mm -hmm. and there's also the Queen's Diamond Jubilee you know that might be a, you know a cause to celebrate there as well and we could be seeing see this as part of the build-up towards there that. Are, there are of course financial arguments linked to having you know a day during the week mm -hmm. when people aren't working mm -hmm. because that presumably there are financial implications there but I, I'm guessing you would argue that the the impact sort of the social impact of that you know the idea of volunteering would be greater than the amount of money lost. There's a different kind of Absolutely. equation. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, the value that volunteering puts into the economy, you know, is reckoned on sort of 40 billion a year kind of thing if you do those kind of sums. And the thing as well, I think, is it will give us a charge of energy, you know, because volunteering does make us feel good. It's not just like a, a drag on us, you know. So we think it'd be, you know, a bit of a zip in the middle of the autumn. I mean, the other thing is, of course, that um, I mean, lots of employers are encouraging their staff to volunteer anyway. So mm. that, that could be a way in which they could help organise that kind of time. Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, just a couple of other suggestions uh, from viewers as well. Kerry says it's got to be something to do with our service, men and women. It'd be nice to have a date around 11th of November. Um, Tracy also agrees Remembrance Day should be a bank holiday too. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, either there any more of your thoughts, do let us know this morning. Uh, you know the address is uh, BBC Breakfast at bbc.co.uk. Text us on 61124. Uh, text costs between 10 and 12p, depending on your network. Um, should we have a look at the papers this morning? Mm.